The Ministry of Communications and Works hosted a town hall meeting on Tuesday, November 5th at the Eastern Longlook Community Centre to present designs for the Parham Town Corridor Project. The project is the first of several infrastructural development to be carried out under the $15 million loan agreement between government and the Caribbean Development Bank to fund a natural disaster infrastructure rehabilitation project for areas that sustained damage during the passage of Tropical Storm Otto in 2010. Dr. Drexel Glasgow, Chief of Infrastructure Planning Research and Development in the Ministry of Communications and Works, says the design for the Paramtown Corridor Project is geared toward reducing the risk of flooding in the area that intersects with the Blackburn Highway. Basically, during the, the aftermath of the storm and the various assessment that went on, Paramtown was deemed a vulnerable area, meaning vulnerable to the risk of flooding. If those of you who are familiar with the, the road, and we, when I say Paramtown, the corridor, we're speaking of the road that abuts Blackburn Highway and takes you well up to in the vicinity of David Smith's residence. That area, as you would know, the water runs on the road, on the surface of the road, and from time to time, especially during heavy, heavy storm activities, the water actually caused some flooding there because of inadequate drainage. This project is meant to address that situation. It's meant to alleviate the drainage issues. It's also meant to minimize the risk of flooding. We will in no way divulge the budget for the project. And the reason for that is because there's an active tender. And so we indeed need the process to be fair. So the project itself, we saw will uh, impact the entire corridor and definitely the communities in the resident. Um, during construction, we can expect the road to be uh, dug up in certain areas. Of course, it's going to be phased, but we felt it necessary that the impact was that great that we needed to talk to the residents, at least let them know what's going on. Under the terms of the CDB loan agreement, government was required to hire an engineering firm to oversee the project, which involves the improvement of the territory's roads and drainage system. The signing of a $499,500 engineering contract in March this year between government and FBL Consult Inc. out of St. Lucia, headed by Gilbert Fontenard, marked the final major step before work begins under the project. Fontenard gave insights into the project designs at the community meeting. He noted several issues and constraints such as the discharge of grey water and the need for land acquisition. We have a very narrow road and also we also have indiscriminate discharge of grey water. The project hopes to capture, the design captures most of these issues. The constraints basically are we have property fences straddling the entire road, and that, that is a major issue. And in considering the situation, one of the things we try to avoid is to avoid land take, because land is precious to everyone, and especially where it's in short supply. So the design, as far as possible, um, tried to avoid any land take. And in the case of Parham Town, I expect the criticism to be, like anything else, the road should be wider. Um, yes, the road can be wider. The road can be as wide as we want. However, it means that we would have to acquire properties. And acquisition comes with its fair share of issues. So, one, so in terms of a constraint, that is a major constraint. The other issue is there's a sewer line running right down the center of the roadway. Again, that limits the options that we have in terms of drainage considerations. Residents of Parham Town can look forward to a major aesthetical transformation of that area in addition to a reduction in flooding. The recommendations stemming out of our designs are primarily the provision of adequate subsurface drains to capture most of the water and the outfall of is, will end up in the main drain, um, heading towards the sea. We also intend to upgrade the carriageway 
um, by improving the, the, the road surface. We intend to reconstruct the entire road and also the, some retaining walls along the route. The FDL consultant also shed light on the guidelines covering the procurement of materials to carry out the Caribbean Development Bank loan funded project. If we are to procure a product, let's say for instance like a pipe, we would be forced to get it out of the UK instead of the US, even though the US is cheaper um, because of the CDB guidelines. And CDB carries an audit and inspects the material to determine and request the origin of the documents so that the origin of manufacture must be presented so and where there is no compliance you can have a situation of misprocurement so it is not we the designers who determine that or it is not the government of the BVI these are the rules established by the donor members of the CDB it's simple we contribute money to CDB we expect you to buy from our manufacturers the procurement rules establish what we call qualification guidelines. That is, a contractor to qualify must be able to demonstrate that he has the experience to, have on the, to be able to undertake the work. He must also be able to demonstrate access to cash. He must also be able to indicate that he carries out a particular amount, a volume of, of transactions per year, what we call the annual turnover. So, again, it is not something I said, it is not something Drexel said, it is not something the government said. The document must go to the CDB for no objection, and CDB establishes or their rules, and CDB may relax on some of it. So, in a situation, you may find that two or three contractors may be, only two or three co contractors may qualify. FBL Consult Inc. is expected to work with the Ministry of Communication and Works to oversee projects in Jos van Dijk and Virgin Gorda, as well as several areas on Tortola, including Ballast Bay, Coxheat, Purcell Estate, and Huntham's Gut, among others. The projects are expected to be carried out over a period of 30 months. Only local companies will compete in the tender process when construction work begins.